good evening from London. Welcome to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Today, Harry and Meghan torch what little was left of their relationship with the royal family and what little was left, frankly, of their own reputations. Last week was mostly sycophantic. This latest instalment was downright seditious. Prince Harry mauls his own brother. He accuses his father, the new king, of being a liar. He even has a dig at his late great-grandmother, the Queen, for standing by and doing nothing. The royal family is directly accused of destroying two of its own to protect itself. And I don't know where it all stops, all this. Where does it end? We've got the book, and then we've got the interview circuit, and so it goes on. It's all apparently a dark plot by Britain and the royals to smear the poor, defenceless, vulnerable Sussexes. Trickery, treachery, hypocrisy. And if there's one conclusion to draw from the final instalment of their Netflix series, it's that Prince Harry surely is now a traitor to the country that he once served. William and I both saw what happened in our, in our dad's office and we made an agreement that we would never let that happen to our office. And to see my brother's office copy the very same thing that we promised the two of us would never, ever do, that was heartbreaking. It was terrifying to have my brother um, scream and shout at me and my father say things that just simply weren't true and, and my grandmother, you know, quietly sit there and, and sort of take it all in. They're happy to lie to protect my brother and yet for three years they were never willing to tell the truth to protect us. Unbelievable. This blistering attack, not only on the institution of the monarchy, but also personally against the senior royals who represent our country around the world, is, in my view, beyond contempt. In their selfish, vapid attempts to rewrite history, recasting themselves as victims, these two have sold their souls and they sold Harry's family down the river. It's unforgivable and it will leave a bitter taste in the mouths of millions of people. But there are toe-curling moments in Michaud too, moments that would upset even the strongest of stomachs. View okay, well, Viewers are force-fed simpering clips of the pair frolicking on Californian beaches during COVID in Tyler Perry's mansion, no less. While most people were locked down, many in tiny homes with lots of children. But they were the real victims, not the thousands of people dying from a new pandemic virus. They again cry foul, of course, at the beastly, horrible media for pursuing them and wanting to take their pictures, whilst persistently throughout this new instalment showing their own highly intrusive pictures of their own children. Did they ask permission from most children to invade their privacy for money, which is, of course, the very charge they make against the media? We also learned that Meghan actually thinks she's done Britain a favour. Get on the plane and it's not the pilot, but whoever is sort of overseeing the crew. And he came and he knelt next to my seat and he took his hat off. And I just remember looking at him, he goes, we appreciate everything you did for our country. And it was the first time that I felt like someone saw the sacrifice not for my own country, for this country. It's not mine. Sacrifice? Is that a joke? A sacrifice? Who was this guy? Who was this cabin steward? Does he exist? Or is he like the last one you met? You remember the Lion King premiere? We told you what a hero you were. But we couldn't find him, could we? Will we find this cabin steward who apparently knelt? and took his hat off in respect for this awesome woman who'd sacrificed so much for our country that she's actually caused so much damage to? I'd like to know if that person exists. Or whether it's just one of the cabin crew doing what they normally do, which is they kind of crouch down, don't they, and they take their hat off if they've got one on and ask whether you want chicken or beef. That's normally what happens. We also learned that Harry can't begin to understand why people might prefer Catherine the Princess of Wales, who, of course, never complains, never explains, and just does her duty. This is how it was covered for her. This is how it was covered for her. If you don't see the difference and understand why it's being reported that way, why, then I can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. I just can't. I mean, you sound like a blithering lunatic. Don't you, Harry? You, I can't help you. <laughs> really? 
Well, let me help you. There were a gazillion critical stories about Kate long before your beloved Meghan came along. It had nothing to do with Kate's skin colour and the Meghan criticism had nothing to do with her skin colour. At all. Nothing to do with it. She just started doing things along with you which were rankly hypocritical and in some cases downright unpleasant and you both got called out for it and you don't like being criticised. You think if anyone criticises you, they're automatically bullies and racists. But they're not. In fact, one of the people who's been accused of bullying is Meghan Markle by several of her PAs at the palace who had to sign NDAs so they couldn't tell the truth. I'm sure that Meghan Markle and Harry, who want the truth to come out, would like those NDAs to be lifted and maybe they should say so publicly. So we can hear from those PAs who I know at least one of them was regularly reduced to tears by the bullying from Meghan Markle. And if Meghan doesn't think she did bully, of course she can sue me, because I've said it now. So come and sue me and let's take it to court. All of this leaves a deeply unpleasant taste in the mouth, doesn't it? And again, I say simply, where does it end? How much damage do they want to cause? They can't be allowed back to any royal events because they'll probably be wired up and taped for the next series of their thrilling life story. So what do they do? What does King Charles do about his own son? Does he cut him off? Does he strip him of his titles? This is his son. It's a Shakespearean tragedy unfurling. And I'm afraid when it comes to help, I think Prince Harry might be beyond it. He's been manipulated, and I think partly it's down to him as well, into believing they're genuine freedom fighters. To see this institutional gaslighting that happens is, it is extraordinary. Um, and that's why everything that's happened to us was always going to happen to us, because if you speak truth to power, that's how they respond. Truth to power? What are you talking about? Your Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, once third in line to the throne. It doesn't get a lot more powerful than you before you decamped for your freedom, before you gave up any royal duty, but wanted to have your royal cake and eat it by keeping your title so you could exploit them and make gazillions of dollars in America to the highest bidder. And what do you do for that money? You trash your family endlessly, and you're going to keep doing it, as does your wife, who trashes her own family, most of whom she's disowned. Is this what happiness looks like, Harry? Really? You're happy? Hating your entire family? Your wife hating all hers, apart from her mother? Like many of the claims in the series, none of this stacks up, does it? There were the claims of racism at the palace, but no evidence of who that person was or what they actually said. Apparently, Meghan, she repeated this in this new instalment, was banned by somebody at the palace from seeking help for her suicidal thoughts. Think about that for a moment. Who was that person? Are they still working at the palace? Does that person exist? Did somebody actually say to her, you might be feeling suicidal, but it's bad for the brand, you can't get help? And if they did, where was her husband in all this? Where was Prince Harry? Mr. Mental Health. He never stops banging on about it and about the need to get help. And yet when his own wife apparently had suicidal thoughts, he didn't get her help. Does that make any sense? Does that sound even remotely plausible to you? Because it doesn't to me. So that's where we are. Another tissue of self-serving... Lies, mostly, I suspect. We don't know yet, but most of it looks like the Oprah interview, just another load of unsubstantiated smears designed to portray them as victims. But it doesn't really pass the muster of fact-checking. One minute they're the beloved young couple who inspired a nation, the next that nation is horribly racist, out to throw Meghan to the walls from the very beginning. The attacks on the press were so wicked that she was hated and feared for her life. But also the entire plot against them was because they were simply too popular. So they were hated and despised and too popular. And this was all apparently a heroic fight for family privacy, but we have to learn about that fight in a $100 million reality TV show that flaunts their young family and boasts about their very public social justice campaigns. 
Harry and Meghan take their audience for fools. They blame everybody but themselves. They present even the most incendiary of claims with no evidence. And sadly, the impact is real. The royal family is getting damaged. The monarchy is getting tarnished. People are believing, including Beyonce, it appeared from this series. They're believing that the royal family are a bunch of callous racists. Well, they're not. I know the royal family, a lot of them well. And they're not callous racists. And they're furious about this, and they're right to be furious.